Everybody's talking about specs after NVIDIA announced the new 5000 series and AMD announced new RDNA 4 GPU series. Well, what little we know about it. But I wanted to dive into a little bit more of a different segment than just the specifications. So to kick it off, a high level reaction for me to AMD's presentation was disappointing. There just wasn't enough actual tangible information in that presentation. We all knew RDNA 4 was coming, but they didn't provide any additional information, in my opinion, to what exactly we can expect. They gave us some relative performance numbers, and it just really doesn't do anything for anyone. While I think AMD has a lot of good with RDNA 4 and the new X3D processors announced, I'm excited for both. I'm really just gonna withhold any kind of judgment or speculation or anything like that until I have more information because it's just not enough for me to go on personally. I still wanna put together a build with the RDNA 4 GPUs just because I wanna see how they perform for myself. But as for my actual reaction to it, it's just disappointing that there wasn't more information. It kind of felt very timid in lieu of watching NVIDIA's presentation. NVIDIA's presentation, on the other hand, in my personal opinion, that is how you do a consumer electronics show, keynote presentation show, essentially. You can tell Jensen, the CEO of NVIDIA, is very passionate about technology. He loves technology. You kind of got the feel that he was talking off the cuff about these things. He seems to know quite a lot and it seems like he has his hands in a lot of the different products, which shows testament to the growth that the company has experienced. Whereas when you watch AMD's presentation, they didn't really show a whole lot of passion. It was a very different feel for me personally watching NVIDIA versus AMD in that sense. And while I know competition is a thing in business, I personally am not a AMD versus NVIDIA kind of person. I prefer the best technology come out of both companies and people buy what they like. But the segment that I really wanted to touch on was something that I started seeing literally immediately after the NVIDIA presentation, which was oh, it's AI slop, it's just frame gen, it's all fake, which I think is very disingenuous to the direction that the industry is heading. I'm gonna try to brush on a topic that I think deserves its own video. And after hearing my thoughts on this, let me know if you want me to make a video below deep diving into this subject, because I personally think it's super interesting but we've kind of hit a ceiling on pure raw performance, I believe, personally. There is a peak that you can get to and, and the returns that you're gonna see are going to get incrementally smaller and smaller and smaller as the generations increase and, and time goes on. While we're pushing 5.7 to 6 gigahertz on processors, we're generating a lot of heat. And, and that's one of the things that holds back progress is heat and cooling and stability at those speeds and temperatures. And one of the things that raw power requires is essentially what Nvidia called it, brute force rendering requires speed and cores. Well, the more speed you add and the more cores you add, the more heat you add, the more cooling you need, the more power you need. So there's, it's just diminishing returns with raw power. So we have to find a different way to do these things. And that's where neural rendering comes in. This is going to take the place of rasterization. This is the future. And I know that's kind of hard to imagine, but think about it this way. We're kind of mixing rasterization with neural rendering where you render one frame and now you generate three for a 4X improvement. So I think in the not so distant future, that first frame is also going to be AI generated. Now hear me out. I think game engines are gonna experience significant changes coming up in the next couple years to the next decade. And I think the next generation or the generation after that, we're going to start to see fully AI generated games. Now, 
Again, this is more of a deep dive subject. There's an article about the original Doom being fully AI generated at, I believe it was roughly 20 frames per second. So while right now we're getting that input lag if you use frame generation, which by the way is fairly insignificant. We're talking about maybe 50 milliseconds. The average human reaction time is roughly 250 milliseconds to a visual stimulus. So you're talking a fifth of that time in terms of input lag, which in reality is so fast, it's, it's hardly even noticeable. So a digital foundry did a deep dive on the five and a half hours of footage I believe they've had with DLSS4 and a 5080. And they found that the input lag was about seven milliseconds more than the original frame generation. So we're talking diminishing add on lag for more additional frames. So again, while we still have that first frame that's rasterized and then generated by AI, I fully believe that we will eventually be moving to fully AI generated game engines. And again, I'm just speculating on how it might work, but I'm thinking that the game engine would kind of change from having, you know, like the 3D world and all of the geometry and all the assets in it to being just instructions that are sent to an agent that the GPU uses to produce all of the images. So while you're not going to be getting rid of artists because you're still going to have reference art and scenes and different things and characters that the AI will use to generate throughout the game, those are still going to have to be created by human artists, right? But the rest of it will be generated and, and the possibilities with that type of game engine i think would be astronomical and i think we would see some amazing gameplay innovations some amazing stories games that are going to be completely different for every single player where you read a review and you play a game and it's totally different same concepts but just completely different completely different endings etc it's it's an extremely cool way to think about the future of video games and nvidia very heavily talked about agentic ai in their presentation and how ai is going to use tools and all of these things about their blackwell architecture and how it utilizes it and i think that is going to be the future and i think that them bringing AI back to GeForce the way they are is showing that the path forward is going to be that way with AI neural rendering and all kinds of amazing things that we're going to see in the future. Now, this is, again, a topic I think would be fun to do a deep dive. Let me know in the comments below if you would like me to do a video on what I think the future of this would look like, because I think it's a really fun discussion a really fun speculative conversation that can be had. And I don't think it's all, it's all bad. Uh, in fact, I, I'm not going to be sad when rasterization goes away completely because we are moving faster and faster into the future. Innovation and change is happening at accelerated rates and it's going to affect every industry. I mean, in the presentation, they're talking about essentially building the matrix for robots. The robots think they're in a virtual digital twin when they're in fact operating in a physical warehouse or factory. And an AI controls those robots inside of that digital twin, but it translates to the physical world. It's, it's incredible things that are happening with technology. And this goes back to my other video that I put out recently about Willow, where Willow is computing infinitely in what Google claims to be the multiverse, parallel universes, whatever you want to call it. It's computing these all at the same time. One of the things that Nvidia talked about at their CES presentation was synthetic training data for AI. And that is right up quantum computing's alley when you actually look into what they're doing. So for instance, they gave the example of a self-driving car records a complex process of driving through like a construction zone, and then it extrapolates that and produces 20, 30, 40, 50 virtual versions of that 
exact scenario with small differences. A, a, a worker here instead of there. A flag holder here or slightly different positioning of traffic cones. Whatever the case is, it simulates all of this synthetic training data, but without quantum computing, we're still going to be limited to linear computing, meaning it's going to go one after the other. Obviously, you know, there's going to be multiple versions of linear computing with cores and threads and whatever else, but it's still at the core linear computing one after the other. So this is what I was talking about in my Willow video was when we put AI with quantum computing, we are going to be able to train artificial intelligence on all of these situations at the same time. Solve all of those training sets at the same time. There would be no limit to the threads or the cores per se that it's using to compute because there's no linearity to the computing. It's just all at once with qubits. So that was really cool to see what they're doing with that kind of stuff. And I'm excited for the future, but that's really the direction I wanted to go with this video was rasterization is dying and people are, are holding on to it and really, really trying to keep it alive when we need to move on to different things because that's what the future holds. Raw power has kind of peaked and hit its limit, I think. Companies are seeing diminishing returns on research and development of raw power, which is why all of this AI is taking off as fast as it is, because you're seeing exponential returns on investments. So when you mix heat, frequencies, and cores, and everything that goes into raw power, it's just not, it's just not there anymore. We've seen the exponential increase in performance from rasterization already. That's in the past. We're, we're done seeing that. I think the sooner that the industry and, and consumers accept that and learn about the new technology that's coming out at a deep level so that they can fully appreciate what we're going to see in the future, I think that's necessary for these things to fully catch on and to fully be appreciated. I am very excited personally about all of that stuff. And NVIDIA is not the only one that's doing it. M AMD is 100% working towards these things as well. They're just further behind. They're not as large of a company. They don't have as much money to put into it, but FSR and all of that, it, it's similar products and similar solutions done differently. I think we need to look at these technologies deeper than face value and actually look into why they're saying the things they're saying. They're not talking about raw power with a 50, 70 hitting 40, 90 performance numbers. They, they're talking about that with frame generation and that's totally fine. That performance to me is incredible. I'm excited to see that for $549, you can have a great performing GPU and have a smooth experience. And most people that are gaming are not going to know the difference between DLSS and no DLSS. CES this year was really fun to watch. I think the announcements were cool. I, again, a little disappointed with AMD, not very much information. I'm not sure when they're going to announce more information, but when they do, I'm excited to hear about it. I'm, I'm excited to see what they bring to the table with their new GPUs and their new CPUs that they're releasing. It's going to be cool to see just like NVIDIA's was cool to watch as well. So let me know in the comments below if you would like me to do a deep dive into the subject a little bit more. Again, I think this is a super interesting topic, how everything is kind of coming together and you can see the pathway forward if you actually look for it. I think we can be more positive and we can have a more fun outlook on what's coming. I personally love to be positive about the future and think about the amazing things that we're going to see. So that's really all the time I had for today. Kind of a ramble video about CES, more so than spec announcements that everybody's doing. If you want to see those, Gamers Nexus has great videos. Digital Foundry has excellent videos. Jay's Two Cents is a great channel to check out for those types of videos. I kind of wanted to go a different direction, so I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.